a lot of young people these days watch uh, movies with superheroes in them. They have like super, uh, everyone, knows, everyone knows Superman, he's fairly old, as in classic, a classic superhero. And uh, superheroes, they have their own whatever different powers, some can move at super fast speed, some can, or some are powerful, some can go invisible. Um, there's, there's one other superpower which is somewhat interesting, which is uh, reading people's minds. Right, to, to actually be able to understand what another person is thinking, to kind of get into their head, right? Uh, and I was, I was thinking about this as, I remember years ago I was watching uh, one of those, those X-Men movies, and I was thinking about this particular superpower, Xavier, the, the anyway, let's not go into the, the, the whole plot line, doesn't matter, but there's a superhero there who has this ability to read minds. And I was thinking, that is really interesting. But, and I think maybe, we may even have that gift to some degree in heaven, but God probably will not give us that gift here. We've heard of some of the saints, like for example, who, who could basically read souls. Again, this is kind of a, a heavenly, I think it's so, it, it could be the kind of gift that we would get in heaven. But I think for most of us, God does not give us that gift here. And there's a reason for that. Uh, it's good, generally speaking, that we cannot read another person's thoughts. And it's good that people cannot read my thoughts, generally. Uh, because if you find someone difficult, because they can't read your thoughts, you can still choose to serve them and choose to love them without them actually knowing that it's, it's kind of an effort for, or it's maybe even an outright cross for you, you know? We can choose love, we can choose virtue. Not necessarily because the feeling is there, but because the choice is there. So I'm, I'm, I'm serving you, or I'm loving you, or I'm, I'm smiling, or I'm serving, uh, doing whatever job you ask me to do, whatever it is. Uh, I'm doing so because I'm, I'm choosing love, but if you were to actually see into my head and say, oh God, do, are they actually, do I actually have to? Are they ask me again, my goodness, it's so annoying when they do X, Y, and Z. Uh, but you can choose virtue. So it's, it's good that we cannot read uh, our, our, our other, other people's thoughts. It allows them also to choose virtue uh, towards us. Uh, so it's, it, it's, I think it's interesting that, that, that probably in heaven we will get some gifts that we don't necessarily have here now. But if we don't have them here now, there's a reason for that. Uh, our first reading today, I find quite interesting. My children, our love is not to be just words or mere talk. Everyone who is married knows this. Uh, very, very well, that uh, if someone says they love you but there's nothing to back it up, there's no actions, there's no service, there's no, there's no affirmation, there's just nothing behind it apart from words, it just talk is cheap, talk is cheap, it just rings so hollow. Our love is not to just be mere words or mere talk, but something real and active. Only by this can we be certain that we are children of the truth and be able to quieten our conscience in his presence. That's a really interesting line. Right? Only by this can we be certain that we are children of the truth and be able to quieten our conscience in his presence. This is something that a lot of young people today find difficult. And to be honest, maybe, maybe not just young people. Young people in a particular way because uh, with the advent of the, the smartphone and that, a young person can constantly distract themselves with social media and online shopping or just general browsing and you know you can be you can live in this kind of virtual world where where a lot of young people these days actually are very intimidated to answer the phone if the phone rings you know if, if a phone rings then you might have to actually talk to someone and then you'd have to know immediately what you're going to answer because if they ask you you can't just say um i'll text you back later i mean you have to answer so even i've heard of parents um you know calling their son or daughter to say you know what, what time will we come pick you up whatever and the, the call just rings out or the, the call is rejected. And then they immediately get a text, what's up? <laughs> the young person sends their mom or dad a message, a text saying, what's up? So, well, you rang? Rather than just answer the call, you know, they just, they, they even if intimidated to engage in conversation over the phone with their own folks. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make here is uh, only by this can we be certain that we are children of the truth and be able to quieten our conscience in his presence? Something that we discover over and over here uh, in Holy Family is that silence, 
magnifies. Silence magnifies. Silence makes more evident to us what's actually inside. So at times you come to the Adoration Chapel, or especially people who are, who are just beginning here, they come to Adoration uh, in the, the first weeks, and they actually find it difficult. Some find it like almost, um, almost a negative experience, because when they come in, the anger that they might have had, the sadness, the unforgiveness, uh, the guilt that, that they may be experiencing, all of that is magnified. It's magnified in the presence of the Lord. It's not the Lord's fault. The Lord isn't doing something bad here. He's just simply showing us the truth. Right? He's kind of revealing ourselves to ourselves. He's, he's allowing us to see what's really there. And that can, be, that can be a difficult experience, especially if you've spent years distracting yourself and, and running away and hiding in this virtual world. Then to actually kind of hit the brakes and to be illuminated by the Lord's presence. And we see the good, the bad, and the ugly, and, and the, the, the parts of ourselves that, that, that need healing, the parts of ourselves that need converting, and the parts of ourselves also that are good, but we see it all. Whereas we probably would rather just, just see nothing, just, just, just answer the next thing, just do the next thing, just, just to distract ourselves, and then I don't have to see, and then I can just kind of move on through life without realizing it. Uh, we're actually spiritually, and maybe even uh, psychologically stuck. You know, we, we won't allow ourselves to, to heal, to grow. So silence magnifies. This is how we will know that we are children of the truth, to be able to quieten our conscience in his presence. To sit in silence with the Lord. And to quieten our conscience in his presence. Whatever accusations it may r raise against us, because God is greater than our conscience and he knows everything. So he can read our minds and thoughts. But he does so with such love. He does so with a desire to see us, his children, happy, at peace, realized, fulfilled. So in our spiritual lives, it may be, and it's, this is kind of a typically Irish thing as well, we tend not to have much silence. We tend to um, have lots of formal prayer, which is good, but it's also important to, to balance that with a certain amount of, of silent prayer, where you're not praying the rosary or the chaplet or the stations of the cross, but you're simply sitting there with the Lord. It's not one or the other, it's one and the other, one and the other, both. Just to have a little silent time with the Lord. And as we sit there with him, we will see how the, the silence magnifies. And what it magnifies, might, as it might be good, it might actually be that I'm better than I, in the sense of I'm, if I've been beating myself down, I might discover, actually, I'm, that's, not, that's not from God. That's not true. That's not right. And it may be that there are certain relationships that need healing, so, and it may be even saddening to, to think of that. So what do we do? You're, you're in the presence of the Lord. You're in the silence and these thoughts or memories come to the surface. Well, you're with God. You're with God who loves you. You're with God who's almighty. So there's no better person or place to, to bring those to the surface and to entrust them to him and to pray for them. And yes, if that means a bit of a, a, a tear or two, so be it. Silence magnifies. But in the silence, it can also magnify the good things. That then I, I begin to discover the love of God for me. The hope that our faith gives us. The joy, this kind of deeply rooted, solid joy that, that only God can give me. I begin to discover the, the truth of who I am, of who God is. Of the truth of his call for me. The truth of his never failing love, even when I've fallen short. So we ask the good Lord today to renew our prayer lives, to, to deepen our knowledge of him, and to help us to rediscover him in the silence, to help us to rediscover our need for healing, that we might give him the opportunity 
to make us into a new creation. Amen.